Hey everyone, welcome back to Hobby Fist Plays Dota. I know it's been a bit of a delay between the last time I did it and this one, but uh, it took me a while to actually get a couple of decent videos I thought were worth actually showing. Like I said in the State of the State statement for last month, uh, a lot of the times it was either I did really bad, uh, people rage quit, or I just didn't do a good enough job trying to at least show something. And uh, I got a couple of them saved up, and the first one I'm going to be showing you this time is uh, Venomancer. Uh, I kind of set them up as uh, support, kind of a little bit of jungling, but mainly just support. Again, to reiterate how I'm going to be going over these videos, I'm going to be mainly just focusing on the hero itself and how I decided to play them, and just some tips for everybody. But, well, let's get started. Venomancer is uh, pretty versatile, honestly. He could be played in a lot of different roles. Um, but mainly the way I play him, uh, is a supporter of some sort, uh, that just means I sit in lane or try to keep the lane in a good enough spot for my carry to get farm and be able to get the items and levels needed to actually, uh, be effective in the game. And there's a pretty good example of it in this. Uh, but let's go over all of his spells. This first one is a uh, venomous gale launches a ball of venom in a line, poisoning enemy units. So they take both initial damage and damage over time as well as suffering slowed movement uh, it's get Dale Venomous Gale. Ugh, I can't talk. Venomous Gale deals damage every three seconds over its duration. It lasts for 15 seconds. Initial damage 25, uh, 10 damage per tick, and slows for 50%. Um, this is depending on what role you go for. This is usually the number one skill you get, just because it's it's a really good uh, disable. The slow 50% is pretty decent. Damage is okay too. Um, before you calculate in all the spell resistance you get. It's 150 damage per tick uh, total with 25 before, so that's 175. I can do math, amazingly. So if you're usually going for support, usually this is the first thing you pick up. To harass people out of lane, this is a great spell to use because you, as they're running away, they're moving super slow and you can get a lot of basic attacks in and everybody else in your team, if they want to try to kill the guy, can get up to him super quick. Uh, second ability is a poison sting. It's a passive. Um, it adds poison damage to your normal attack and it lasts for six seconds, six damage per second and slow is 11%. So it does actually stack with a uh, venomous gale. So if you haven't really figured it out yet, this guy is all about you know, poison damage, a lot of damage over time abilities, pretty good harasser just from these two spells alone. His next one, I'd almost say this kind of makes the uh, hero what it is, is Plague Wards. It summons Plague Wards to attack enemy units and structures. It's immune to magic and gains Poison Sting level from Venomancer, dealing 50% of the full damage. They last 40 seconds uh, at level one, their HP is 75, and the damage before adding uh, the Poison Sting is 13. Depending on what level you have of this, it gets applied to the Plague Wards, but they deal 50% less damage. So it's uh, duration, six seconds. It's your normal attack, your your character's normal attack. Uh, then 50% of that is each Plague Ward. And they have five second cooldown. These things, they're pretty useful in scouting around. Say you're farming in a, in a spot you're not completely sure if you're going to be safe. You just kind of spread these around yourself. And these usually will attack the first thing they see. So if someone tries to come gank you and they run past it, you've got a pretty good heads up warning before they actually get to you. But these only really work on non-invisible units. So depending on what the team you're going against has for heroes in their lineup will depend on how effective these things are. And his ult is uh, Poison Nova. It's spreading ring of poison that does damage over time to enemy units around Venomancer. Poison Alpha cannot deal lethal damage. Targets will be left with at least one health. It lasts 16 seconds. Damage is 30. Then there's the whole Scepter thing that gets added to it, too. This is a super strong spell. Um, usually, if you're in a team fight, you want to have this be, like, the first thing that you put down just because it you want to get that damage on there quick and fast. It does go through spell immunity, as it says, and you cannot dispel it. Uh, the spell itself will not kill... Uh, anybody but if you add any of your other abilities with it and it's let's say like you have a normal attack poison sting on him right as to get to one health this thing will actually kill them so it is a good idea to get this thing on as many uh, of the enemy heroes as you can and then maybe put some plague wards down and have them do their poison sting or maybe gale them too just to emphasize the point that they aren't going to get away 
Um, then their talent tree here, you've got at different levels, 30 movement speed, XP gain, health, cast range, magic resistance, and damage. Then the talent, the, the 25 talent, uh, three times plague ward, HP and damage, or an added 14% to your poison staying slow. Usually how you, which talents you want to go for, it really depends on the game you're playing. Um, movement speed, it's pretty helpful for obviously getting around the map faster. Health and cast range. Um, I think I generally go towards uh, cast range, just so if I'm trying to chase somebody down, the quicker, the farther my cast range, the quicker I actually can get, say, venom scale down on them, so I can slow down faster for all of my teammates to catch up to them. Uh, level twenty, uh, usually I go magic resistance. You don't have to, but really, again, it depends on what you're uh, going up against. 75 damage is pretty helpful going towards your plague wards and then the last one Again depends on how you want to build them Are you building to push lanes and kill towers fast or you really want to do a lot better crowd control. So All these talents are pretty useful and you really have to do think about what your uh, Goal is for each game you play So there's no real basic idea What ones you should go for over other ones? Um, there are websites like I think it's dota buff that usually shows percentage of, okay, X amount of people who play this hero pick this talent over the other one. Uh, but again, it really is dependent on what you're doing in the game. So there are general guidelines you can follow for what talents to pick and what to max out first, but it really depends on what you're planning on doing in the game. Are you going to be a support? Venom scale is usually the number one thing to get. Then followed up by maybe Plague Wards of Poison Sting. You're going to be jungling a lot. Then it's just straight up these things until you max them out. Then maybe get this and then that. Uh, again, uh, it's a pretty versatile hero. It really depends on what you want to do with the with Venomancer in the game. So, again, really depends on what you want to do. I don't know how many more times I can say that one line over and over again before I finally shut up and just show you. Uh, ooh, I apparently. Oh, that's treasure. I thought I had this. I don't. Uh, again, I really wish they actually fixed this bug that actually show the hero's mon the, the the model in the screen, but it doesn't. So that's enough babbling now. Let's get into this game. Again, it's a I was playing support in this one. Um, I think I played this probably two weeks ago, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Seeing who we're going up against um, on the enemy team, it's a Rubik, Axe, Storm. Uh, Chaos Knight, Order Magi. So, looking at the lineup here, there's really only one um, here that probably would be in the off lane, and that's probably going to be Axe. And uh, we ended up doing a tri lane bottom, which meant that um, it was me, Dazzle, and we were also supporting Sniper. So, you have to bring these things into consideration when you're uh, going out to lane. Who's who are you going to be going up against? And how you should, and who who you're supporting. Uh, Sniper himself, he's a super uh, non mobile carry. He doesn't have any escape whatsoever. So you have to take that into mind when you're supporting him that you can't really leave him alone for the game to start because Axe would just run up there, get right in his face, and would just start pounding on him and force metal lane uh, the items I picked up um, this was a pretty good idea to get um, because as we'll see in the lane here we saw that axe actually has a ward so I brought this out to stop him from being able to block the camp that's that he put the ward down on which this this ward here if I put all yeah it's right in that square to stop that camp from spawning so I brought this with me so if say if I go out there after I'm sitting here trying to block the creep. So, again, if you remember from the, uh, I think it was the Underlord video, you want to block the creep camps to keep the creep equilibrium closer to your tower. He blocked um, about as good as well as we did, but also the creeps on his side do move a lot slower. So it's a pretty good. It's far enough away that um, he won't be able to uh, actually get any get any farm uh, someone I'm being a little distracted someone's trying to do laundry it's not important anyway 
Um, so we know that the lineup we have going to support our, our, our carry here is our two range guys against Axe. And I know that I should be out here as best I can. My whole job is just to make sure he cannot get any farm or any level. So I'm just making sure I harass him away from EXP range. And then you see this, that slow. See how slow he's going? That's also combined with his poison staying. It does a bit of a slow two, level one. Uh, 33 so look how much just two spells did to his health even with a little bit of regen he's pretty much down to 50 percent health and we have such good harass that there's no way he's going to be able to actually get to our uh carry to bully him out of lane so at this point the other thing you want to do is to make sure that you keep all the creeps as close to your tower as possible and that means you got to pull the jungle creep camps to pull aggro out of uh pull your creeps aggro out of the way so the enemy's creep wave can actually get close to your tower to help your guy farm more and again he knew that there was no way he was getting away from this so we had to teleport away and we've pretty much established that we now control this lane there's very little he can do now against this lineup let's actually do uh fog uh, I can't do no fog. What if I do the dire? Uh, nope, none of that stuff. Whatever. Both teams. Um, so we pretty much established it now that, okay, he knows that it's a waste of time. He really can't come to lane. So now he's kind of looking around. Well, he is coming back. He's got, uh, coming to get some regen, but there's not much he can do. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go jungle. So he's out of lane now. We can now keep stacking these camps because if you remember from the previous, I don't know if I mentioned in the previous video, if you, you got to pull the jungle, whatever creeps are in this camp here. Um, if you can pull them out of these yellow boxes so that they're all out of this yellow box before it hits, I think it's every minute, you'll get a whole other camp, jungle camp to spawn. So as a good tip to know when to pull these, pull this camp is when the creep wave is just at your tower down here that way you know okay once it crosses that you just go over there uh aggro these guys bring them over to lane go just enough out in the lane so that they'll attack you and draw these guys aggro and at this point i'm just putting my wards down trying to clear this camp it's a huge stack it's real hard to actually uh um clear th these many creeps this early into the game but uh, the whole, the, really the whole point is just making sure that they all, the creep wave dies. I can keep eat the him safely underneath our tower to farm while he can't really get any farther down here. Cause he knows that, uh, dazzle and I or dazzle and me, I don't know, proper English. He can't really get in a lane cause he'll instantly get harassed out. But now he's in lane now. He is now one level below our carry, so our carry now can just... He's got some more damage, more health. He can sit here and watch what he's doing. He's just pinging him. He can't stay in lane. He's got he's to leave, and the sniper's doing a well enough... Yep. So you can see how all of this stuff can start snowballing, where if you establish your carry getting way more farm, and you block the, the offlaner from the other guy, other team, out of your lane. You'll have less levels, less farm. So when you get to uh, about this point, I was like, okay, I feel safe now knowing that he's level five. He's now level three. He could probably be even lower if I wanted to stay dedicated to just straight up keeping him out of lane. But I felt, okay, he's got enough of a level advantage now that he can bully him out of lane himself. So now I'm going to try to go into jungle and get myself a little bit of EXP and farm. So this is kind of the same way you would do uh, Venom jungle. I'm not the greatest jungler with Venomancer heat. The, it, it kind of got the, the jungle kind of got a balance and EXP change to it a few patches ago. So, a lot of heroes that you would jungle with before aren't as viable now as they used to be. But he still does a decent enough job. I want—I just made sure I was out of the lane. I 
Another advantage to being out of the lane is he's going to get all the XP himself. And look, now he's three levels ahead of him. And he can just do this to him now because I've sat here and established that Axe is now way too low to come in a lane to do anything against our sniper. Where generally, if I didn't do any of this stuff beforehand, Axe would actually be able to... Um, say it was the same level as him, he would actually be able to come right into lane and just harass him out of lane. But since me and Dazzle were smart enough to establish right off the bat, okay, we're going to make sure there's nothing you can do in this lane. Uh, all that work we did to start with is now going to start snowballing towards actually having our uh, sniper get the levels, get the gold, get the farm, do well enough that he doesn't need to be as babysitted as he used to be. We can all kind of, okay, he's fine by himself. Now it's time to go and uh, farm a bit. So we have a bit of a delay because Rubik DC'd. Um, I've kind of already spoiled how much more time left in this video. Let's just jump ahead 10 seconds. All right, th he's back now. After making sure that I did everything I just talked about, I'm going to the jungle. And as you can see, the wards now have let me see the uh, poison sting damage on top of the let's go to free free camera. Uh, my damage is 47. These things do 50% of that or whatever. That one was a level one, maybe level two ones do a bit more. Yeah, 22. So yeah, it's 50%. So and adding the poison sting on there, it, it does a pretty decent uh, job clearing out all the camps. So I can stay in the jungle get my farmer gold myself uh dazzle now has moved down to lane here i don't know how he actually uh how uh oh he got jumped by storm spirit that's another issue with storm spirit is he's a highly mobile guy and he can close the gap pretty quickly on sniper since sniper himself isn't super mobile or have any escapes whatsoever but that's for whenever i do a uh sniper video but at this point, I've got um, the Ring of Bacillus on to give a passive aura to all the, the uh, I can't talk right now, all the plague wards, I believe. Let's see. Let's go to free camera. Do they get? No, they actually, they don't get that. Uh, I thought they did. Well, we learn something new every day. Uh, I had this on because I thought I was going to give all my plague wards a uh, aura buff, but it didn't. Uh, I mainly got this for uh, to help a little bit with jungling and get some mana regen. I mean, they're 20 mana per uh, Plague Ward. I don't have the greatest mana regen. How much do I have? Yeah, I get 0.9 mana regen per uh, levels. Or, yeah, I think it's... I get 1.8 mana per level. There's a whole math thing involved. I don't know it off the top of my head, but... There's a whole other level of math here. Health and mana is kind of low, so so I kept an eye up here. Okay, Dazzle's hanging out with them. I know Rubik came over here to help support Axe because Axe was so far behind. Let's, let's look at the levels here. Level 7 against level 6. He's catching up, but uh, I think at this point, what did I do? Oh, well, I got Arcane Boots, you know, to help with uh, Plague Wards, spamming those all the time, getting Venomous Gale down. I think we were going to go try to gank Axe here because this is such a strong disable. I put this up here as I did see Rubik. Okay. And I put, okay, I'm going to make sure that before I go into this area, I put it down. And if say Rubik's camping out there, he was going to see me. But since I put it down, oh, he came back in a lane. Uh, they didn't really come up. Dazzle didn't come up with me. I thought maybe he had a ward. Does he have a ward? No, he has zero ward down there. Okay. Uh, Rubik was dewarding us, so I thought, okay, he's going to... Maybe he'll come towards me. He didn't. Uh, it's another thing you do to help close the distance, too, is you can put a plague ward down, and he'll put a poison sting, and that does 11% slow. It's a bit of a slow. Uh, over a long enough period of time, you'll be able to actually close the distance. Then you can land this on them. And then either you can kill him or your team can kill him. So my Plague Wars are so great. They're good for scouting. They're good for initiating 
nice. because they put that poison sting slow on. I mean, it's only 14% to start with, but say you got that talent tree at 25, 14, and 14, that's 28. It's noticeable. It's definitely going to be slow enough where if you don't have a four staff or anything, it's nothing to sneeze at. It'll get you'll get you pretty close. So I went to go jungle a bit more, and then I saw that. Oh, does he have any? Let's see. Oh, he is super low on mana, but he's totally dead because I put the gale on him, slow him down. Um, what a great thing to do is if you're coming into a fight, put some start. The first thing you should do if you aren't going to be able to actually blink in and do your poison nova is walking in. Put one of these down first to start stacking the poison sting. You can uh, control what you want these uh, plague wards to actually attack. I don't know what the actual keyboard command is for right now. If I put down, I think it's controller alt, and then I click what I want all my plague wards to attack, they'll all try to. Otherwise, I'll just go for whatever's closest. Whatever's closest, and the first thing that comes into the range, they keep attacking it until it goes out of their range. But you can override their default actions by, I think it's control. I could be wrong. But again, after went down to help our uh, attempted gank on the bottom lane, uh, go straight back to farming. These two camps here, it's pretty good for uh, positioning your plague wards to be able to attack them the second they come in range and usually they can get off an attack or two before they get back to their camp so you can re-aggro them and then they'll come back into attack. Uh, there's a couple of different sections. I'm going to, oh, I'm going now. What am I doing? Uh, I went Glimmer Cave because I think I had a, oh, what was this? Oh, he totally saw that ward down because they had a ward there. So that was pretty obvious. You would not have jumped down there if you didn't have vision. So I went ahead and bought some more sentries because I felt, why the hell would he jump over there if he didn't have any vision of me? Uh, I don't know why I went straight down to the bottom tower here. Maybe I thought I was going to get jumped because he was Storm Spear went on me, but I don't know. I probably could have went closer towards Sniper to completely protect him, but I didn't. Uh, I always want to carry at least one teleport scroll to, for the, to start with in a game for... Say maybe I could have got up there and helped save any of these people. Uh, you don't want to buy. Uh, I put that down because he totally saw me. I did not see it until right now. Uh, but I put it up there, put the plague ward because they will attack wards if they see them. Because, again, it's the first thing they see they attack. Uh, but back to the teleport thing. A uh, pretty good thing I heard was... It is good to carry one, but you don't want to do more than that because money is pretty important for in the game to start with. That carry more than that, you are wasting a lot of uh, money if you buy two of those. So he came right in my face, and I went, "Okay, throw that down." I did. I think I did land it on him. Yes, I did. So see, it's taken for thirty damage, and it lasts a pretty long time. But it's definitely not going to kill him. It's a good thing to throw down at the beginning of the fight. Just to start the damage on anybody. If they have blink daggers, it will disable their blink daggers and for the uh, entire duration. He dove way too far. But I was able to actually land that on two guys. and Slowed down one. As we retreated, I should probably throw down more plague wards. Yep. Just so if they want to chase us, we have so much uh, anti-initiation, I guess you could call it, with his shrapnel. These, they have to walk through them all. They get hit with the poison stings. Uh, it really punishes them if they don't have any way to quickly close the gap. Like, he does, but you run out of mana super fast. He has a reality rift, but he's got to be in range. And if you keep slowing him, he's not going to be in range. This is good, too. We know he was up here, so... Uh, you throw those plague wards out up there to scout the area so it's easier to find people hiding in the woods up there. It's a really great spell. It's one of the reasons why he's probably one of my most favorite uh, heroes to play in the game. Uh, I think you'll notice if when you play these games long enough is 
you're going to find at least one. More likely, you're going to find three or so heroes that you just somehow click with. Uh, you just watch their, you see their abilities, and like, yeah, this makes sense to me. It's he's a real fun hero to play. Every one of his abilities. Oh, I can understand this. I know how this works. Where is who am I focusing on? Oh. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I guess I was just like, oh, this is fun to watch. And then I was uh, process of walking from lane as I did teleport. I guess back from up here. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Uh, so I am going for uh, a glimmer cape to help protect. Again, I probably maybe should have got a, another mobility item fast because this is a uh, one of the drawbacks with Venno is sure he's got all these great slows, but he really has no way to escape anybody initiating on him. Uh, as soon as like these guys get on me, I mean I could put slow down try running away but once all the heroes jump on me there's very little i can do to get away so you have to buy items to compensate that and one of the first items you can get is either a blink dagger you can also get a uh um four staff but i opted for uh a cloak because it was going to help protect anybody who was going to jump on us that I could invis people. But as you see, I'm throwing these Plague Wards down to help chase and keep anybody from getting away. I'm also being trying to be super careful that I don't give away um, any of my really... If I gave away Poison Over, that probably wouldn't be real bad. Instead, I ended up giving away Plague Ward, which is just as bad itself because now he can start kind of helping f fight us. Uh, helping us fight to actually clear this lane, but we're eventually going to do it just because Sniper. Uh, so you got such a great start to begin with. You got super levels, decent farm, and he is outside the tower's range, and you can just snipe away. Let's see what is... Uh, uh, he's right up there with our mid laner for uh, levels. So I'm here again trying to protect him, but he stayed way too long. Well, my whole plan was to glimmer cape him and then just get away. But as you see, I did that. It lasts for six seconds, but he had total vision over me. So that meant that they had a uh, sentry down mid. So once I saw that, which you can see on the minimap down there, there's clearly one. So I was like, oh, okay, they definitely have something mid. So uh, I just know that next time I get come back alive, I have to get rid of that. So after I got glimmer cape, uh, I, th I went straight for... Veil of, Dis Veil of Discord. Let me see this item. Up. The whole point of Veil of Discord is it increases the amount of uh, magic damage anybody takes. And since this is magic, um, you either blink in and cast um, cast your Poison Nova, and then you can do Veil of Discord because it doesn't. You don't need to put the veil down first, and then. Uh, do the damage. It will actually start taking damage. It'll do the amp damage even though they already have the spell cast on them. As you can see again, I put the poison... Uh, where's my mouse? I put the po Plague Wars down. They were slowing uh, Storm Spirit as he was trying to get away. It was doing 13% slow. Eventually it was going to catch up and uh, we would have been able to kill him, but he got within tower range so he backed off. And then I remembered, oh there it is. And then my ward was right there. Started attacking, but it died, so I went and took care of it. Uh, what did I go here? Uh, XP gain, I guess. I didn't feel confident enough in the amount of EXP I was getting. And I saw they were jumping on him, and that's why I'm just sitting here in the back, making sure I'm not in range of getting hit. Um, making sure to protect the carries, and the, uh, if they try to jump on him, I can make them invis and kind of buy him more time. All at the same time, putting down Plague Wards. Stopping say if he had a blank which he does it's gonna stop any damage you do to him even counting your uh, Plague wards is gonna stop him from being able to blink And again, they got close enough and I, I'm noticing I'm saying again a lot. They were getting close enough that I Felt okay two or three of them are close enough I'm gonna pop this on so if they want to keep chasing after my carry they're gonna get super punished for it 
So we won that fight again. I'm just going around checking for wards, I guess. Trying to put them in unusual spots so they don't get dewarded. All at the same time, actually, uh, all the while dewarding them in the obvious spots. So you always want to check that in usually pub games is check the obvious ward spots. Eventually, they'll smarten up and not put them in the obvious spots. But until then, just ward the obvious spots or deward the obvious spots, but put your wards where they'll still get decent coverage, and it won't, but it won't be as obvious. Again, they're jumping on our carry. I'm going to throw these down to keep them invisible. Dazzle's doing the same thing to keep them alive. So isn't OD. I'll go over their spells when I actually do them. But I'm just making sure my whole job is to keep carries alive or anybody who is close to actually get, taking any damage. And now they jumped on him. Uh, we really had uh, our team comp really good at uh, answers for all their initiation. Say Axe jumps in and taunts somebody. Either I can... Uh, well, all I can really do is Glimmer Cave, it doesn't matter because they're going to automatically attack him. Uh, he's got a way of keeping it from actually taking any damage by... Like, it's a banish, basically. And then this guy has an ability to keep them from dying for a short amount of time. Granted, his ult actually goes through that spell, but I'll explain that when I actually do a uh, Dazzle video. But for now, I'm finishing up the Veil. I don't have great money. Uh, I'm just pinging out the Invis. Actually, I do take it. I feel like they're all up. Maybe I can try to scout a, uh, someone to kill. But after we push mid, they probably won't go back into the lane we just left since we both have these two lanes here. Uh, I came out behind. I felt maybe someone tried to get behind the... Uh, and he did try to get behind the uh, tower. And I just fucking whiffed that so badly and then he tried to jump on me invis myself he banished me but i'm gonna nova the second i come out and then i have to make sure oh he did steal that spell yeah he did the uh whatever that thing's called and then oh, i put that he couldn't do his ult on me so now i'm just making sure i have enough um plague wards around his little thing he's being banished by so that if the second he comes back he's gonna take damage and not be able to blink and stay far enough away so even if he was able to blink somehow, he wouldn't be able to target me with his ult. So it's not as great as the first staff, but it can be pretty uh, clutch, I guess, when you have someone jumping on you. And thankfully, these guys were able to watch my back. Uh, I have the veil done, as you can see here. It increases magic decreases magic resistance by 25 percent i couldn't tell you the actual math on everything but it, all you know is less magic resist more damage this does uh, after this i mean the game is pretty much done at this point i'm here to protect up see invis he got banished i did give him yep the gale he didn't get it anybody though I think after this, the uh, normally what people would do is they might rush this as the first item, or they'll uh, do blink dagger then this. So say a team fight's about to start, you can jump right in, dump this down, and then you, then you pretty much figure out. Okay, I've done everything I need to do. Because you do have some spells after your ult, but you really want to get that uh, damage down on as many people as possible. Yeah, you can do it on one guy, but it's not the best in the world. So now we're just tower camp, uh, fountain camping at this point. He stole my plague wards. That's one thing you do have to pay attention to when fighting a Rubik is knowing that say, you use one of your big spells. You don't want to, you want to use another not so useful spell because any decent Rubik knows, oh, he just did a super big ult. I'm going to get in there and try to steal it as quickly as I can. So, Tower Camp, uh, whatever it's that, he's probably going to ult me now. Oh, uh, he did it. No, uh, Clock did a really good job keeping me alive here. Um, he was able to stun him. Uh, he has that uh, ability that lets out a stun pulse 
I kept him from actually chasing me down. I said, I love you, Clock. You're amazing. Um, so I have the veil. I've never bothered saying it out to me yet. Other items I'd probably get for staff, definitely, because mobility is a super important thing on this uh, hero. Especially against invis heroes know what they're doing. If you don't have detention, they're right on you and they slow you You need to be able to escape as fast as possible That's one of his counters or also as I said one of his weaknesses, but also a counter is Anybody who can close distance super fast um, Anti-mage is pretty good for that because he can blink around everywhere. So can't Queen of Pain Um or anybody who can pretty much lock me down without actually giving me a chance to leave. Uh, I did hit him with the stun. And I have low health and he's trying to go on me. Uh, I did get the, the poison off. And he, he might have died when he teleported, but I'm not sure. We just were uh, really fortunate in that every time they did try to jump us. There was always at least two or three of us around to cover our backs. And as you can see, we were able to give him a strong enough start to begin with that he was able to get all these items farmed safe. It's real important when you start the game that you're able to protect your carry. That's your whole job's support is to support. And you have to be able to establish uh, your, your team in your lane over theirs. And if I just left Sniper to go against Axe, Axe would have just dominated that lane. But since Dazzle and I were able to stay in the lane and protect him, keep him from harm, there's nothing they could do. It's pretty textbook. There's probably way better examples of it, but he did a pretty good job. Uh, Dazzle and I. I don't have to say that he stole Gale from me. But just to reiterate, it's real important to make sure as a support to know your matchup, who you're going to go on, who you're going to be going up against and how to react accordingly to it. One of the big things with Dota is just knowing how your hero you're playing works against the heroes you're playing up against and then buying the items accordingly. But this has been a hopefully inform informative uh, video on at least how to play been a support and what you have to do to start the games to make sure you can give your carry as good of a start as possible uh this is greg again for hobby fist thank you all for watching if you find any of this stuff informative if there's anything i've made a mistake over uh please let me know uh in the comments below and uh we'll see you next time